Greetings, royal family. All right. These sisters are back. Let's get straight into it. Thanks for clicking on the video. Kick back, relax. So here we go. Wife client, right? We're still in Andy's office. Picture it. Andy's office, boardroom, wife client, PI lady, Andy. So the wife client is still calling Andy all types of bees and home records since last week. Okay. So at first Andy, you know, was not having it. And Andy says, you know, I'm not going to allow you to talk to me this way and disrespect me. So she was like, sit down, the wife client, honey. <laughs> oh, this is intense. So the PI, this was the PI's, uh, the private investigator's ID. I don't even remember her name, um, for the wife client to come and sit down and talk to Andy. So that private investigator, she seems like she has like a plan or something to get back at Gary. I don't trust her either. Anyway, so the wife is threatening um, to, I think the wife's name is Jasmine, but the wife is threatening to have Andy disbarred, okay? And she wanted to know how her and Gary met. She's like, tell me everything. I wanna know how you met, you know? So Andy goes on to tell this fake love, this love story that they met in the grocery store and she's telling the wife how, you know, she was looking a mess in the grocery store and I went out to get my favorite tea and you know, he reached it for me off the shelf and he was flirting and he said that he liked my bunny slippers. And I'm like, <laughs> Andy, you really think that this crazy woman wants to hear how her husband fell in love with you in your bunny slippers? And what are you doing at the grocery store in, a bunny, in your bunny slippers? So you were in your pajamas? You couldn't draw on some jeans and a t-shirt, girl? Mm -hmm. So Andy's just basically saying that, you know, she, oh, I looked a mess. And she did admit that Gary told her that he was married when they first met. He said to her, you know, if I wasn't married, you know, I'd take you out on a date or something like that. And she ran and she ended up, Andy ended up running into Gary um, at the same grocery store like two weeks later. She said, but this time I was dressed to the nines coming from work. And the um, wife client, and he, she starts, Andy starts saying what Andy, I mean, what Gary was saying. Oh my God, this iced coffee got me tongue tied. I'm hyper, I'm hyper. Okay, let me calm down. So the wife interrupts um, Andy and recites the same game that Gary spit to Andy. Player, player. So Andy is telling the wife like all of their personal business um, concerning their marriage. Andy's just like, you know, he told me this. He told me that. He said he wasn't happy. He said that he was sexually frustrated. Yada, 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 yada. Andy, <laughs> you're looking real trash right here. You know what I mean? You look, you at your job. <sighs> Some people don't know when to play dumb and shut up. Anyway, so the wife pulls out Andy's earring out of her pocketbook and she says no she asked her before have you ever been to my house and andy's like no so the wife pulls out a earring that she found in her house oh god andy after you done lied to this woman's face and said that you've never been to her house she said i found this in my bedroom so andy she looks like she's about to start crying and the wife calls andy another round of bees and tells her that she hopes that her life is full of misery on purpose Ooh. I felt that one in my chest. Then she storms out. Now the PI tells Andy that the wife wants to sue the firm and have Andy disbarred. So Andy's just sitting there looking hopeless, like hopeless. Then for whatever reason after that, they decide to show us Zach and Karen. So Zach makes bre breakfast in bed. So for now they're all good. Uh, as Zach is, um, as Zach is leaving, Andy comes in and she is filling Karen in on what went down. And it's just, I was just wondering what bad advice is Karen gonna give Andy now? Sheesh. So Andy, she plans on meeting up with Gary and telling him everything. This is what she tells uh, Karen. Moving along, oh God, Danny and Sabrina. So Sabrina, she's at Danny's job. She's at the airport and she wants to talk to Danny about Calvin. And I'm like, oh pluck my eyelashes out one by one, please. So she wants Danny's opinion and is asking her what should she do? You know, Sabrina is that type of person that will ask you for advice and not take it. Or she'll say, no, 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 I can't do that. No, I can't do that. Total waste of time. 
So Karen um, calls Danny and she ends up thanking her again for having her back about Zach and saying, you know, most women would have slept with him. Thanks for having my back. And then Karen says that, you know, he gave um, that Zach gave her his paychecks. I think that's what was um, taped to the bathroom uh, mirror when Karen went into the bathroom or whatever. So Zach is basically, you know, trying to do right and pay some bills and stuff like that. Yay, Zach. Anyway, so Zach has a date plan, right? So there's, we're still at the airport, right? This long scene at the airport. He comes up to Danny and he's talking to her and he says that he has a date night plan for Karen and he wants to borrow some money. So he asks Danny for some money. And I'm just like, the relationship between them is weird. It's shady and, and, and a little inappropriate, right? Is it, is it just me? So whatever. So there was an awkward scene between Danny and some guy, some white guy, big buff white guy. Uh, he's really shy. He asked Danny out. Um, he asked her for her number. Danny's just like, why do you want my number? This is real weird. So weird that the guy's sister was like his wingman. I don't know. So what is he crazy? We're going to find out that he's like a serial killer or something like that. Or who knows back to Zach. So he's still at work. This was still in the airport. He's approached by a woman who is his coworker. She works at the airport as well. She tells him she is pregnant. So Danny is looking from afar, looking at the conversation between the two of them. So she walks up and Danny ends up finding out that the girl is pregnant. So Zach is just telling her like, you know, please, please go home. I promise I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. Danny is cracking up and she's just like, you, you can't catch a break. So she's taking off her key and handing it to him, basically insinuating that when Karen finds this out, you're going to be homeless again. So you might as well move back in with me. So we go to Andy's house now, right? Okay. So the private investigator shows up to Andy's house and wants to talk. And like I said, I don't know what this private investigator's angle is, but I am not trusting her at all. She looks crazy too. So the PI is telling Andy that, you know, the wife client is downstairs and she wants to come up and talk and she wants to see inside Andy's house. Crazy, crazy. So the uh, PI is also telling Andy that she knows all about her and she's, what did Andy say to her? She's, the PI said something slick and Andy was like, you know, kiss my A. And the PI was just like, I would love to every, every inch of it or some crap like that. And Andy asked her if she's a lesbian. The PI says, yes. So Lord have mercy. What, what Andy girl, what have you gotten yourself into? Jesus. So there's a knock at the door and I'm thinking, okay, it's the wife client. You know, she, got out of the car and came upstairs. It's Gary. I said, uh Oh, make it good. Tyler, make it good. So Andy, she's telling the PI to go downstairs and get that package for her. Right. Meaning the wife, like go get the wife and bring her back upstairs. Gary doesn't know what's going on. Andy, she starts screaming at Gary. She's showing him the pictures that the private investigator showed her. She's throwing them at him. And you know, how could you do this to me and all this other stuff. So he's like, you know, let me explain. Let me explain. Then Gary's wife walks in. So now it's getting good right now. It's getting good. So Andy tell, tells Gary that this is how it's going to go down. So now she's like the big shot lawyer calling all, all the, uh, the shots or whatever. So she's telling Gary, mind you, they're all in her living room, all of them. So she's telling Gary, look, this is how it's going to go down. You're going to give her all of your money. You're going to give her the car and you're going to give her the house. This is what Andy is telling Gary. So he says to Andy, okay, as long as I have you. I'm like, wait, what? So the wife, she starts flipping out and Gary tells the wife that he does not love her anymore and that they've been going to counseling for three years and he doesn't want her. She knows this. It's not going to work. The PI, she tries to butt in, right? And she calls Gary out about him being, you know, rendezvousing or holding hands or something like that. Oh no, at the airport with that other woman. That's when, uh, remember when Danny saw him? with another woman. I thought that that was his wife too. But see, I said this two episodes, two reviews ago. I was like, I bet you any money that probably wasn't even his wife. Anyway, anyway. So Gary tells the PI, like, how much is she paying you? What is she telling you? And he says that the lady that he was at the airport with is his sister-in-law and that his wife knows that. I'm like, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> so he went in, like he went, he basically went with his sister-in-law 
to check on his mother-in-law, which is his wife's mother, obviously, because the wife lied and said that the mother is sick. So the sis, so Gary's sister-in-law and him traveled out of town to go check on his mother-in-law. And he said that the mother was fine and he doesn't know what type of games that she's playing. This is Andy to the, to his wife, you know, you're sick and you're playing all these type of games. So we basically find out that Gary's wife is a liar and she is crazy. My goodness. So Gary tells the PI lady, you know, she tries to butt in again and he told her to, to shut the up. And the wife has just been lying to the private investigator all this time. So the wife, she's not saying anything. So she's standing there looking stupid. And so is the private investigator. So Gary, you know, he is crying and he's telling Andy that he will give up everything for her. And he tells her that he loves her. Um, and she should have just basically told him she should have told him all of this. And then he just ends up walking out and you're wondering what is Andy doing during all of this crying and telling Gary she's sorry as he's walking out. So he left, he leaves. At first the wife didn't want to move from the door and you know, she, he's like, look, get out of the way. You know, I'm trying to get out of here. So he ends up leaving. So the wife is, is pissed. She's still standing in Andy's living room. Andy is standing there crying, sobbing, all sad, looking all sad and pathetic. And she says that she still wants Andy disbarred. So she ends up walking out. So I'm just like, well, I'll be a son of a monkey's uncle. Now this was an interesting t shift. I mean, I knew that wife was a little crazy and I didn't trust that private investigator, but how are you a private investigator and you didn't figure out that your client is lying to you? See, I don't trust her completely. Something is up with that PI aside from her haircut. Moving along, Karen, right? So Aaron, we see Karen in her hair salon and Aaron's ex-wife is in her salon chair. So, <laughs> oh man, forgive me for laughing y'all. Forgive me for laughing. Okay. Let me get it together. This iced coffee really got me like buzz, like lit. So Karen sees that she has one last client. You know, she's being told that she has one last client. And when the client turns around in the salon chair, it's Aaron's ex-wife crazy. And she says she wants Karen to do her hair. Okay. When she said that I was cracking up and I said, this is going to get ugly. This is not going to go well. So Aaron is not talking to his ex-wife. Um, she's upset. You know, she's like, he won't talk to me. He won't talk to me. And Karen is trying to explain to this crazy woman that she's no longer seeing Aaron. And she's telling her like, look, you got to get up out of here. You have to leave. So the ex-wife turns around to reach for her pocketbook. So we see her reaching in her bag and she pulls out a gun. So I'm like, Oh Jesus, here we go. But then she puts the gun in her mouth and pulls the trigger right there in the salon. So I literally, I screamed out loud and that's where the episode ends. Now I'm, I'm going to say this, the writing in this episode is all over the freaking place. Like, first of all, the writing in this show is all over the place, but the writing in this episode is all over the place and it's okay because I am hanging on and hopefully we will see where Tyler is going with this show. But to me, that was the, the last scene with the, um, what the heck is her name? Gertrude or whatever the hell her name is where she blew her brains out in the salon. Like, yo, yo, no, Tyler, what? That was like all the way left. Like, this is what we're doing here. Like, I don't, I don't, I guess I have to wait. I have to be patient and see. And, um, I did see next week, somebody was telling Karen, like blood is on your hands. How, how is this Karen's fault? How, how is this Karen's fault? Karen, you, sh you should have called the cops on her. But then again, Karen was trying to be sympathetic. You know, she has kids. She understood. She told her, look, you know, get away from here or whatever you know, leave me alone. Like I, I, I can't help you. I can't do anything. But Aaron, you didn't know that your ex-wife was suicidal pastor. That sounds judgmental. I'm not trying to be judgmental, but for her to just blow her brains out in the, in the, in the salon, like, I think that's a, that's a bit, that's a huge leap Tyler from what we're accustomed to seeing for these several last several episodes that left me so clueless. I was like, what? I literally screamed out loud. Like what the, 
Well, Royal Family, I guess next week we'll see. Um, now in the salon, you know how many, you know what, let me not say that because that's going to sound insensitive. Okay, Royal Family, <laughs> thank you for, <laughs> for sticking it out with me to the end of this video. No, seriously, the writing is all over the place. So Tyler, hopefully he will tie up these loose ends because I'm thoroughly confused, especially about the woman you know, killing herself in Karen's salon. That That's a bit much. And where the heck is Aaron? We haven't seen him. Did we see him last episode? I don't even remember. Royal family, be sure to like this video if you liked it. Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with me during this crazy caffeine-fueled uh, review. Um, get down in the comments. Tell me what you think. If you saw the episode and you saw the ending, what did you think about that? Like, didn't that seem like a scene that was totally not supposed to be in sisters that's right i i don't know we'll see what tyler's doing royal family keep your notifications on i'll be back soon real soon until next time peace